So now it's time to reconcile the bank statement by using the reconciliation form. These forms come in a variety of looks, but it basically contains the same information. If you take a look at it, um, we have all the information here. We have our statement and our checkbook separated basically by a line. You can see on the left side is for your statement balance, on your right side is your checkbook balance. Then we also have, I'm gonna just put another line in here, is it's kind of broke up into figuring out what you're missing and then totaling it up on the bottom. Your bank reconciliation form should look like something like this. Okay, when filling out this form, there's a couple of things that you must have. And we've already talked about one of them is your bank statement. And again, this we've already covered what is included in our bank statement. You also need your check register that also shows you the check marks that you've put in. Remember the check marks here. This means that um, Carrie Sports were where you've already received that check back. So you, it is a canceled check. It's already been paid along with the ticket source, Bell's Department Store. You've also had... Um, a couple of deposits already put on your bank statement and that's why the check marks are listed right here is that those deposits have been put into your checking account already. Now we're ready to fill out the form. The first thing you need on the form is we're going to work with the side that says statement and the first thing we're going to take a look at is what is the balance from the statement. Okay when we go back into our statement you can see balances statement is $235.80. So we'll go back here and put $235.80. Next, we're gonna take a look at the deposits that are not on the statement. This one right here. The deposit's not on the statement. So when we go back into our check register, we've already taken a look at a couple of things. We can see that this deposit here and this deposit right here have check marks by them. So therefore they have been received by the bank. We do not have any other deposits listed there. And so therefore the bank has received all of our deposits. So we'll go back to our reconciliation form and we will put a zero in there because all of our deposits have been accounted for. Since there are no more deposits, we don't have to worry about filling in those lines. And then it says total statement balance and deposits. So we'll take the $235.80 plus zero and we come up with $235.80. Okay, next we're going to take a look at any checks that are not on the statement. So we're gonna go back into our check register. We will take a look. The ones with the, the check marks by them mean that they are canceled checks. So these are all canceled checks. We can see that we have one check here that does not have a check mark by it. Um, this particular checking account charges a fee for every check they write, so therefore that's why there's 20 cents in all the fees right there. So our outstanding check is for $15.20. So let's go back into our reconciliation form and we will put checks not on the statement, $15.20. There were no more checks in our check register that did not have a check by it, so therefore we do not have any more checks. If we had more checks, we would just list them on those lines. Then it tells you to total the checks. So we will add up the checks. We only have one. And so therefore, our total checks that are outstanding is $15.20. So again, these are outstanding checks. Next, we're going to total it up at the bottom. So what we're going to do is just transfer numbers from the top. So it says total statement balance and deposits so we will move this number down there so 23580 because remember this this bottom portion is like a summary of it and then it says total checks 
our total checks is right there. So we will move that number down, 15, 20. It tells you to subtract it. So therefore we'll take $235.80 minus $15.20 and we come up with $220.60. So now when you look at this, this statement balances what the bank has in your account, $220.60. If you look back into your check register, you can see that that number is different. It says it is $224.60. So there's a number of reasons why that might happen. And now we're gonna move over to our checkbook part because we again, we wanna make sure that our checkbook balance matches what the bank has. So we're gonna take a look at the balance from our checkbook, this one right here. The balance on our checkbook, so we'll go back to our checkbook, and according to our checkbook, our balance is right there, $224.60. So we will put that in there. Next, we're gonna list deposits that are not on the statement. When we look at our checkbook register, we only had two deposits and they were both on the statement. Right there, they were both on the statement. So therefore, we do not have any outstanding deposits. These would be Remember, those are the ones that you've already entered into your checkbook, which means you've taken those deposits to the bank, but the bank hasn't recorded it yet on your bank statement. And the reason why sometimes that happens is maybe you took your check to the bank this morning, and when you got home, the reconciliation form and your bank statement was in your mailbox, so therefore, they didn't have time to put it into your account. But going back to that, we didn't have any deposits on our statement that weren't in our checkbook. So we will put a zero there for now. Um, if we had more than one, we would fill in those blanks. Okay, next we're gonna take a look at total checkbook balance and deposits. So we would take $224.60 plus zero and we get $224.60. Next we're gonna take a look at the fees not in the checkbook. This one right here. So when we look back to our bank statement, you will see that we have a couple of different fees right here. Here are our fees that we're gonna take a look at. You will notice that the 20 cents here, here, and here are located in your check register. Those were here, here, and here. So those are already recorded in your check register. If you take a look, there is one more fee here, which is a service charge of $4. And you will notice that it is not in your check register, so you haven't recorded it. The bank has taken it out of your account, but you haven't taken it out of your check register account. So we'll go back into our reconciliation form, and we're gonna list the fees not in the checkbook, which was $4. If we had any other types of fees, like credit card fees or whatever, we would also list them there. Since that's the only one that's missing, we will not have to put anything else in those blanks. Also, there was no, when we look back here, we did not have any interest payments. We didn't um, really make enough money to make some interest. And so therefore, we do not have anything to put in this line. So we could put a zero there or we could dash it out. Then we're gonna total our fees and our interest. Okay, so we take those and we add them up and we put it down there, which is $4. Next, we're gonna total up our right side of our reconciliation form. I kind of have a mess here, but I think you can follow along. Okay, first of all, we're gonna take a look at our total checkbook balance and deposits. So we take our total checkbook balance and deposits and we will move that number down here. We have to take a look at our total fees or transfer our total fees and interest down. And so this number here will go there. Okay, next you are gonna figure out your checkbook balance. You take $224.60 
minus $4, and you come up with $220.60. The biggest thing with your reconciliation form is you have to make sure that your statement balance equals your checkbook balance. Those two numbers must be in balance for your reconciliation to be complete. After filling out your reconciliation form and the balances don't match, either you or your bank made an error. You need to check all your calculations. There's room for error in your check register. You need to double check that you entered everything from ATM transactions to automatic payments. And you may have to check with your bank. But first of all, you should do all the calculation and double checking first before you run to your bank for help. After you're done, you need to make some adjustments. You might need to record any maintenance fees and interest earned in your check register. Um, any of your service charge or interest earned must be recorded in your check register. The register should match your statement balance. Banks don't often make mistakes. If you notice a potential error, make sure you check your files for your receipts. Um, you might have to take it to the bank to get clarification. You need to explain your problem. And then on your future statements, you need to check to see if it has been corrected. Canceled checks are the ones that the banks have paid. Remember, canceled checks have a stamp on it, canceling them out, and it's proof of payment. Keep this for future reference in, in case somebody comes back and wonders if you made a payment, you can use the canceled check or the substitute check as proof of payment. Well, you made it through this lesson and hope everything is going well with you.